up guys i am back here again for another review for you and yes i said hello ha guys because i've been watching some of my old videos and i had a cringy intro i have to admit but anyway guys enough about that i have had a coffee today so it's going to be a very hyper filled video just saying but i am here to do another review for you guys and it is of steve mcqueen's small acts kind of film kind of tv it's an episode, so I would say TV, um, anthology series, but it's episode two. And now the first one was Mangrove, which I did get a chance to watch at London Film Festival. However, I never really found the time to talk about it and I didn't feel like it was my place to. But throughout this review, I will kind of be comparing the two. So you'll kind of get a gift of what I was thinking and feeling about Mangrove. But today this is focused heavily on Lovers Rock and it's kind of like a 70s musical but without the fantastical sort of la la land-esque musical it's more grounded sort of celebrating black culture and their music it's got a bit of reggae it's got a bit of pop it's got a bit of rock in there it takes um course over a night this whole film and it's just kind of people in a room embracing their culture and embracing their music and the passion that they have for it it's very different from what uh, Steve McQueen has done when you compare it to Mangrove and you compare it to 12 Years a Slave because it's a lot tamer but um, the Small Axe series is exploring black culture in Britain although this wasn't based on a true story like it's still based on what people did in the 70s and the music that they had so it's still based on some realism, it's just not like Mangrove when it was based on a real story and a real event that happened in Britain in the 70s. Yeah, so this is apparently a musical. I would probably say if I had to compare it to anything, it's probably Dirty Dancing because there was a lot of non-Christian dancing there. They did not leave any room for the Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ they didn't. But yeah, it's kind of like dirty dancing, especially in some shots, because you know when a baby goes up to the sort of little sort of worker shack thing and they're doing like the whole moving and, and grooving and the, she carried a watermelon and all that. It's um, very similar to that because Steve McQueen really kind of lets the film just be. And there's a lot of prolonged shots as well of just people dancing and also kind of very intimate as well. They kind of have um, a girl's arm over this guy's shoulders and you just see her arms just kind of slowly just stroking his back and you sort of see these intense, and I mean intense, like like eye contact and if you know me well you can see me right now I'm terrible with eye contact um I'm too socially inept for that and I was very jealous that they could make eye contact because if I fancied someone <laughs> my eye contact is terrible I'm like I want to look at you but I can't because I just be like oh my god you're so pretty it's just very much focused on these people in a room having a good time I think it's someone's birthday as well and um it's centered over these two girls and they go to this party and they're just having fun and at the start like I kind of had fun a little bit with them they were playing Carl Douglas's uh Kung Fu Fighting and um, if you've ever watched um, It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia and you know the character Mac, I was very much like them because in the film, the girls were sort of doing like their whole Whoa, like kind of like getting into the groove of the song and I was doing the same. But as soon as like the drop beat like hit, I was like, whoosh, 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 <laughs> just full on, just Mac karate and get um, my, my camera's probably having a feel day trying to pick up my face and it's but yeah like I found myself kind of enjoying it and there was like some soul music and I love me a bit of like the Motown music so I was like full on just grooving like in my sofa like eating my salad just kind of just dancing to the music. Steve McQueen does a really good job of just setting the atmosphere and setting this up as like just a celebratory um look at like black culture and it was just like a really feel good film in a sense which is kind of refreshing from the man that made Mangrove and 12 Years of Slave like I thought I was going to be crying like continuously for hours and don't get me wrong <laughs> I was crying 
but mostly because people were dancing with each other and they were so in love and it was so sweet and I was like, I'm so lonely, I haven't hugged anyone for like ages, like before lockdown, I haven't hugged anyone and I miss it and I just want to run and just be like, hello, hug me, but I, I, I kind of can't and um, yeah, it just made me feel very lonely, so I cried into my salad as well as danced with my salad. It was a very eventful salad eating day, I have to admit. But I think that just shows that this film, especially compared to Mangrove, which is in the Small Axe uh, series, which is the first one to be shown, um, that film was very hard hitting. But Lovers Rock didn't really do that. It was. It was kind of more of a glimpse rather than a deep dive into themes of racism. There is um, a rape scene as well into it, uh, which isn't isn't handled as much as people would think in a film, but it's handled quite delicately at the end. Like there's a tender moment between the girl Sally who got raped and her friend that, that kind of just have like a tender, comforting moment. And then we kind of go back to the main character and her love story with this guy. And and that's kind of what this film was. It was just snippets and hints at different things. Which I think kind of makes sense when you look that it's only actually in a course of a day, whereas Mangrove was a whole event and a situation unfolding. Like, as I said, Steve McQueen does show subtle hints towards things. Like there's an instant where the main girl, she goes and chases after her friend Patty who leaves the um, party. And as she's walking up, she kind of comes across these lads of these white lads and they start being really horrible to her and calling her monkey and trying to like be sleazy and hit on her and like obviously she she runs away because she's a bit uncomfortable and then obviously you have um sort of the police part which was heavily hit on with the mangrove episode where these two lads at the party start having an argument and a police car pulls up and they just quickly run into the house and be like just shush because we don't need this, especially with the police um, at that time. Like, it, it was a potential risk for for black people. And um, he does really have, like, subtle hints of these things through. He's just shown that these aren't just rare occasions and rare things that happen with certain events. Like, these can happen even in a span of a night time. Like, it, it's a daily occurrence for these people, like the racism, the, the threat and stuff like that. That it, It's how they lived in the 70s, but also the horrible thing is it's also how they live now. And Small Axe definitely shines a light to that. And somebody tweeted out about how they were ashamed of Britain and like how they handled things in the past. And I felt the exact same but also I'm proud as well with British film and what Steve McQueen is accomplishing with his small act series like with those young lads hitting on that girl and calling her a monkey and stuff those are still slurs that people use to this day and this was a film sort of set 40 years ago. I think Steve McQueen is right to have these films out especially in a time like this he is showing us that we can't just be a blind blind person to it. Now I'm just gonna quickly wrap up on final points and um, I kind of was upset that this girl, the friend that she went with called Patty, just didn't really get much screen time because she sung under the bridge and like she only sang like a little bit of a song but whew, oh whew, her voice, I was like, I was when they went to the party thing I was like this is it She's gonna sing for us. I'm kind of curious to see what she sings. And then she leaves. And I was so upset. I was like, no, bring it back. I wanna hear her sing. Also, another problem I had with it, I kind of, I didn't, I had the expectation that it was gonna be like a romance, not a rom-com, but like a little bit more heavily towards a romance. Now there is like the romance and it is kind of cute between them, especially at the end when she like lays back in bed and she's like, he. It has been a boy that I really like and it's like we've all had that feeling and it's kind of cute but like I thought it'd be more heavily put on that and I thought it'd be more of like a journey through their blos blossoming relationship and their like sort of romance and stuff it definitely wasn't what I was expecting the story to be about but that doesn't necessarily mean it was bad it just wasn't what I was thinking and 
especially with it having sort of prolonged dance scenes, it kind of felt a little bit tedious, only because it kind of slowed down the pace and I was expecting it to be more story driven like Mangrove. So when it was these just long sort of scenes, although they were lovely and there was one scene where the music just cut out and it was just these people just singing this song and they're all having fun and they're laughing and they're enjoying it. It was just, it was just such a nice scene to see. But it was just, I kind of was waiting for the next bit of story. <laughs> but like, there was good parts to this, like the chemistry between the two actors. I, I couldn't find the names. It was just powerful and there was definitely some chemistry between them. So when she did all like the little giddy sort of like thing afterwards when she goes back into bed, it was kind of sweet because you were like, yeah, they are a really good match for each other. So of course she's going to be feeling like that. And it was just a kind of sweet moment because we all want to all want to feel like that sometimes. Now I will be watching the next, I think there's three more episodes left of the Small Act series and um, it's shown every Sunday at 9pm. For all of you uh, Americans out there, I think it's on Amazon Prime for £1.49 an episode. Um, and then also it's on the BBC iPlayer as well, so you can catch up on Mangrove as well as Lovers Rock. Anyway guys, I hope you enjoyed that review. Now you can let me know what you thought about the film on my Twitter. It will be down, down, downstairs, I nearly said, I don't know. The coffee's wearing off. It will be down in the description below and you can comment on this video. Remember to subscribe and to like this video. We did hit 150 subscribers. It only took me six years to do, but we did it guys. Let's be proud of each other. We hit that last week. And um, my Aminette rev review is doing really, really well. Like that's kind of blown up in my numbers. Okay, my numbers is blown up and I'm very proud of it. So thank you guys for watching it. Have a lovely rest of your day. Bye. <laughs> nice scene to see.